Hey there, and welcome to episode 10 of the Tool Chest Show. Things are kind of exciting because we're going to be finishing up this project today on this show. The, the Tool Chest Show will be completed. So, very exciting stuff. Um, let's see, where were we? Uh, last time we were here, we did our dovetails, and we got pretty much prepared for the glue up of the tray. Um, I went ahead and made the, uh, the wooden square plugs for the square holes. You remember we had square holes, and uh, it's easier to actually plug them after glue up, but I had the time to do it, and I thought I'd just get them out of the way. So they're ready, and uh, we're good to go there. Also, while we were away, I glued up our bottom panel. I uh, used my hide glue as usual. And when it was dry, I scraped it with my cabinet scraper to make it smooth. And then I put this rabbited edge around here so that it will fit into the groove that runs along the bottom of our tray. So, we're all set. Uh oh, also, I made these things for clamping. These things I made just with some blue tape and some scraps. And they were going to push against our dovetails and just help with the clamping a little bit to direct our pressure clamping pressure to where we want them to be. So, is that it? I think we're all set here. I've got my glue, my brush, and we're all ready to go. What I need is my glasses. Okay, very stressful this stuff here. Alrighty. I don't like that brush, I get a different brush. Ugh. Is that not toxic? It's made out of horse hide. Have you had your horse hide today? Okay. Now that looks good there. Okay. This has to go in just so.
check here. Wow, it's right on. Okay. Yes, I'm happy. That looks good. Okay. I think that's got it. It's always a little stressful, but I think we, uh, we got through with it. It uh, looks pretty good. It's good and square. And we're just going to let it dry up now. And we're back. It's been a day, and this is good and dry, and it turned out very well. It's good and square, and it sits flat on the tabletop, so I know it's in the same plane. So we're in good shape here. This bottom panel, before I glued it up, I actually gave it a coat of uh, Danish oil because it's easier to do it before the glue up than it is afterwards. So everything is looking good. It's on to the dovetails. We need to trim these up a little bit. And I'll explain what I mean. When you make a box, typically when you set your gauge line, your baseline, like we did here, we scribed those baselines, you make them a little bit greater than the thickness of your material. And what that means is that when you join your joint together, the ends are a little bit proud of the sides. They stick out just a little bit. I'm talking about like a hundredth of an inch, a very, very small amount. Now, can you see them here? They're actually proud of the face of this drawer. And what we're going to do is, when that's now that it's good and dry, we're going to take a good sharp plane and plane everything flush. By having them slightly proud, you can plane everything to the same exact level. That's why we do that. Now, on a drawer, and this is basically a drawer, a different approach has to be taken. They sit inside their case and they're very precisely fit. They slide back and forth this way. If there's too much play this way in the drawer, it can jam as it's moving forward and backward. So this length, these pieces are very, very precisely cut to fit inside the tool chest. If I make them proud and then plane them off, then uh, I've shortened the length of my tray by a small amount and that's not what I want. So in that case, I make my baselines a little bit less than the thickness, and what you wind up with is right here. You can see that this board's end, the ends of these dovetails, are actually recessed. They're shy of the face of this board here. And they'll need to be, this needs to be planed flush to match the lengths of these dovetails. So a little complicated, I know, sorry about that, but I need to do, uh, just touch on that for uh, those of you who care. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Set there. I'm going to be using my rabbit block plane. And you can tell it's a rabbit plane because the blade goes all the way across the bottom. And this is so that the plane can get inside the corners of your rabbits. Now, I don't need that feature on this plane. What I do need, or what will be helpful, is that this happens to be my only low angle plane that I have. This blade is bedded at a lower angle and it works better on end grain. So that's why I'm using this plane. Okay, let's give it a try here. All right, so there we go. Now it's on to the ends. Now I'm going to use a different plane for this job because I'm planing this grain here. And I think my Stanley bench plane, number four in this case, will be best for this kind of thing. So let's give it a try.
good. Now I have to be careful planing off the edge of this because end grain will crumble and snap off and flake off as the blade goes across it. So I have to get very close and then I'm going to come in from the other side. That breaking off is called spelching. Great word, spelching. You know if it's spelching, it's something you don't want. I don't want spelching right now. Okay, now we'll come in from the other side because we're really close. Perfect. I'm happy. Okay, there you have it. Looks great. The next step is going to be putting little, can I lower this down? Are you following me here? Little pieces of wood glued to the inside of the tray that go right here and one right here. We'll cut them to length. And that way we have something to lift the tray out with. I did this on the first tray. You can see here, little pieces of wood glued in. And this way you can lift it out of the case, out of the chest, like that. So, that's the next step. Whenever you're, um, you're doing something like this, you really don't need to measure in here and then transfer your measurement to the board you're cutting, it's always best to hold it in place and simply mark it right in place. It's much more accurate that way. Now what I'll be using is my Zona saw, the same saw I used for making the dovetails. And it actually comes with a little miter box, an aluminum miter box. So this will allow me to make a nice straight cut. And it has the little lip on the bottom here, which will let me move it up against the table here. Like a miter box. And then this is just a little piece of wood to protect my saw blade. So now all I have to do, get my blade and my saw in place and cut it. There you go. Let's try it on for size here. A little snug, but it does fit. And then what I'm going to do here is just hold them in place and mark where they go with a pencil so that I know where to paint my glue. So, uh, we're going to let this dry, and then in the meantime, what I'm going to do is, or in between uh, now and the next time we get together, I'm going to uh, ease the edges with a block plane. I'm going to sand it. I'm going to give it a couple coats of Danish oil, which means that when we come back, this will be finished, and we can put the whole thing together. So, we're getting there. See you next time. Did I say see you next time? I meant this time, this show. Uh, it's been a couple days and I've sanded the tray and I put a couple coats of Danish oil on it. So let's have a look at it here. Here it is. Looks just like the other one. And I really like the way the uh, finish brings out the dovetails. And it really sort of uh, gets the contrast going here and you can really see the wood grain. So I really like the way it looks. And here's the first one. So um, they match. They look pretty nice. Let's try them on for size. Let me go there. Let 
from there. Looks great. I'm happy with it. Can you picture this on some future episode of Antiques Roadshow with some expert trying to date when this was actually made? There's nothing really about this that says 20th century, let alone 21st century. Let's have a look at it here. It's all hand cut dovetails, mortise and tenon construction with the lid. It's a raised panel done with a uh, plane. And the same with the molding. This is all done with a molding plane. No machines used in this uh, construction at all. Let's look at the inside and the hardware. First of all, before we get to the inside, look at this outside ha uh, handle. That's a two-piece casting. Could have been hundreds of years old. Chain here, nothing new about that. Now these hinges, these hinges are stamped steel hinges. And they were making those, what is that? We, we, they were making those at the end of the uh, 1800s. The Industrial Revolution was in full swing and uh, mass producing hinges just like this was, uh, was being done back then. Uh, let's see, the, uh, the screws, something interesting about the screws, these screws have points like they always do. The machine to make pointed screws was invented in 1849. Up until then, screws had flat ends on them. So we know that this was made at least uh, after 1849. So there's a clue to dating it. This half mortise lock, um, the mechanism here was, um, is the same as mechanisms were back in the 18th century. So these go back a couple hundred years. But I'm sure a lock expert would be able to spot this as being of a more recent uh, manufacture. But it's pretty much 1800s here. So, that's that. It's been a lot of fun. We started this show end of December of last year, right around Christmas time. And here we are November 1st. So, 10 months, let's say. We've, uh, we've taken our good old time to get here. But it's been a lot of fun and we've touched on a number of topics. Let's talk about them a little bit. We talked about um, hide glue, liquid hide glue versus the regular hide glue and yellow glue. We talked about cut nails versus wire nails. Um, we talked about antiquing the hardware with gun bluing and removing the zinc. Uh, we talked about milk paint and the French Neanderthals who used milk paint all those years ago with aircraft projects. Uh, we made a workbench. We made a workbench just like this one, identical to this one. And we also got a trip over to Jonine's workshop to see her and see what she was up to and do some enameling. So it's been a, a long road, but it's been a fun journey. And it's really all about the journey, isn't it? So the big question is where to from here? The tool chest is completed. So uh, I'm going to have to think of another project. I've decided that I really want to keep the show going, so uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be. But uh, we are going to do, believe it or not, uh, a tool chest after show. Uh, and we're going to discuss a little bit more about where to from here. And I'm also going to throw in some things that uh, I wanted to, uh, to cover in previous shows, but never got around to doing it. So it'll be kind of a mishmash of things, and it, can, it should be a little bit of fun. So anyway, um, that's what we'll be doing next time. So tune in again. And um, I think we're pretty much done. My sister Linda sent me an email and she said, when you're finished with the tool chest, you're going to have to have a champagne toast to celebrate. So what we did, what? Some of the care, <laughs> care person. <laughs> we're just going to keep right on going unless she calls for the cut. Okay. So... Anyway, not sure what that was about, but <laughs> but we're just right on going right on ahead here. Okay, fine. And uh, here is your champagne, and uh, here's to a successful tool chest. And uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. Uh, hey, I am really digging the new music. Where'd that come from? Oh yeah, oh yeah, cool stuff. Anyway, see you guys next time.
might just get me roped into this is what I'm right now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs>